Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting November 4th, 2013. There's lots to cover in little time, so let's jump right in with software updates. A number of vendors released or warned about various software updates this week, starting with Cisco. Cisco released a bunch of updates for iOS, telepresence, and something called WAAS. Uh, the biggest update is probably the iOS update, since it affects everyone probably that has Cisco routers and fixes the denial of service flaw. So if you're a Cisco user, go get those iOS updates. Next up is Microsoft Patch Day. It hasn't happened yet but as normal, Microsoft warned about it on Thursday. They're going to release eight security bulletins fixing issues in Internet Explorer, Windows, and Office. On top of that, more importantly, during the week, Microsoft released a security advisory warning about a zero-day flaw that affects some versions of Windows, Office, and their Link Communicator product. Uh, This is a flaw involving the way uh, GDI Plus handles specially crafted TIFF images. More importantly, attackers are uh, exploiting it in the wild. Microsoft says they're only seeing it in limited targeted attacks, uh, but other researchers have said they've seen this in actual malware campaigns. Uh, Usually the attackers send an email with a Word document which contains an embedded TIFF image. Uh, So be careful when handling unsolicited Word documents out there. Finally, there is a fix it for this. Microsoft hasn't released a patch yet, but if you check out our WatchGuard security Center blog post where I talk about this, Microsoft has released a fix it which can temporarily mitigate the flaw on your system until the real patch comes out. Next, I want to share a few updates to some past stories we've talked about, specifically CryptoLocker and Bad BIOS. First, CryptoLocker. You probably know all about CryptoLocker by now. If not, be sure to check out my video on it. Uh, But this week, we learned that CryptoLocker's uh, criminals may be offering victims a second chance to decrypt their file. They've put up a site uh, called the CryptoLocker Decryptor where you can upload an encrypted file and they'll tell you if they have your private key. And then they will ask you for, I believe it's 20 bitcoins, which is quite a significant sum. I think it's over $2,000, maybe more now, to decrypt those files. Now, personally, I don't recommend you pay criminals ransom, but this could be good news in one sense. Uh, This means that their warnings that they're going to delete their private keys to your files may have been false. They may be storing private keys longer than they said they would. So this means if authorities catch them, you might have a chance to, to get the private key associated with your files and decrypt them in the future. The next update is for bad BIOS. I really don't have any new news to share there other than it's been the talk of the InfoSec community this week. Uh, There have been many security researchers that have technically uh, kind of pointed out that some of uh, Dragos' claims about what bad BIOS could do as BIOS malware were false. On top of that, I saw a Twitter conversation where Tavis uh, Ormandy, a very popular security researcher out there, actually seemed to be suggesting that perhaps Dragos was having some sort of mental stability issues. On the other hand, Dragos has continued to write about this malware, and he even has released some uh, uh, binaries or some uh, BIOS samples to the public, though I've seen uh, nobody really uh, recreate his issue yet. In any case, I think it's an interesting topic to follow, but really, no one should freak out about this malware until we actually see proof. Right now, we're just going off the the words of a very well-respected security researcher, but until we actually see empirical evidence, it's just something that we should keep our eye on. So let's move on to a few new security stories from the week, starting with the release of the PCI DSS 3.0 uh, regulation. You probably know all about PCI DSS, the regulations around how to handle security when you handle customers' credit cards. Well, uh, this week, PCI 3.0 became official. Now, to be honest, PCI 3.0 doesn't have many changes. If you've been following PCI for a while, you're probably up to snuff. But some of the slight changes to 
the regulation include things like uh, stronger passwords, paying more attention to credentials and passwords. There is a, a bigger focus on malware detection as part of your security policy. And finally, I think they also have some uh, more specific regulations around penetration testing, how often certain PCI uh, compliant people need to do penetration tests and audits and so forth. So if you're under PCI, be sure to check out PCI 3.0. Another interesting security-related story has to do with Bitcoin, or actually a number of stories. The first is during the week, some college researchers released a paper about uh, claimed insecurities in Bitcoin's mining process. Now, I won't go into any technical detail because it's very mathematical. I'll put a link to the paper if you want to read it yourself. But long story short, you know, Bitcoin allows people to, to mine new Bitcoins. They can get their computers to do mathematical processes to create new new bitcoins and this paper describes a technique where a certain coalition of evil miners might be able to take advantage of supposed weaknesses in this mining process and actually get an unfair share of bitcoins from from their mining versus uh, the bulk mining that that good people do so it was a very interesting paper but what's more interesting is after the paper was released there's many security researchers and other college professors and mathematicians who kind of say that this isn't true. So there's been other papers and other writings that kind of point out how uh, their mathematical and statistical claims won't uh, prove true in the real world. So it's a very mathematical discussion. Quite frankly, it makes my head hurt when I read the paper. But if you're into that sort of thing, I recommend you check it out. Now, in other Bitcoin news, there's been a major Bitcoin wallet hack. Uh, Bitcoin wallets are actually internet services where you can store your Bitcoin and inputs.io was one of the most popular Bitcoin wallets and recently it suffered a hack that allowed the attackers to steal 1.2 million dollars worth of Bitcoin. So that's a pretty big hit and it doesn't look like inputs.io is going to be able to pay back its customers. Frankly this is kind of why I personally don't understand Bitcoin. You know I get the idea of wanting non-regulated decentralized currency but the problem with decentralized currency is there's no control Controls. It's very volatile. Uh, no one's going to be able to recoup your losses if you lose anything because there's nothing backing it. So it's kind of a, a surprising to me that with all its potential insecurities, with all the hacking attempts that's happened in the past, and its relation to a lot of malware sites, it's surprising to me that apparently right now Bitcoin's at an all-time high. In any case, if you're into Bitcoin, I'd check out the paper on the potential Bitcoin mining flaw and be careful where you store your Bitcoin. I recommend you, if you use Bitcoin, store them on your own computer and keep it encrypted. Uh, don't trust it to internet providers. So let's end with a story from my fellow gamers out there. Over the weekend was a Extra Life charity. Uh, this is a charity where uh, gamers play games for 24, 25 hours, and they get sponsored to uh, earn money for a children's charity. It's a pretty cool event. However, during last weekend, the Extra Life website was DDoSed during the event. So attackers were actually trying to take the site down. Uh, the good news is they, they survived two different DDoSes, and they still ended up earning 3.8 million dollars so go extra life people but still it's kind of sad to see computer attackers trying to take down a children's charity event definitely shows us we have to make sure we do something to take care of ddoses so that's it for this week's security news video, but as usual there was a ton of news out there. So if you want to learn about some other stories, be sure to follow WatchGuard Security Center's blog. Uh, besides posting my video there, which contains references to a bunch of extra stories, I also post regular security news, so I recommend you follow it. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.